welcome back to Beauty Bee and to a little bit of a throwback video. You may remember around this time last year, there was quite a trend on YouTube of people putting together $1,000 fantasy Sephora hauls. This was started by Emily Noel, and the basic idea is if someone gave you $1,000 to spend at Sephora on yourself today, what would you buy? I did one of those videos as so, so many other people did. And now that about a year has passed, I think I've gotten a lot better with makeup and certainly my collection has changed quite a bit. I decided it was time to revisit this idea. So I'm off to the side so that I can put pictures up and let's get into it. I think I'm going to start with the categories that I personally find a little less interesting. So fragrance, uh, skincare, hair care. I don't believe I have any sort of bath products or body care products. And then we'll get to makeup, which is the fun part. But we're going to start with two tiny little bottles that are going to cost like $150. The first is the Valentino Voce Viva Eau de Parfum. I had a sample of this earlier this year. I used up, up, actually used up a second sample of it because I enjoyed it so much and I kind of want it. I kind of want the full size. I'm not going to buy it because it's $75 and one, I have enough perfume to last me like two years probably. And two, um, it's $75 for a tiny little bottle. This is the one ounce bottle. 30 milliliters, $75. And the next perfume is actually even more expensive. This is from YSL. This is another one that I have tried two sample bottles of, I believe. I'm fairly certain I've used this twice. This is the Yves Saint Laurent Black Opium Eau de Parfum, and it is $76. So it is just a hair more expensive than that Valentino one. I really enjoyed both of these perfumes. The Voce Viva one is one that's a little bit more daytime appropriate. I think that I would have a hard time pulling off black opium during the day, but you know, I would still probably wear it during the day once in a while too, just because it's a really lovely scent. Um, I feel like these are both pretty popular fragrances and I can totally see why. They're both beautiful and with two items, with two tiny little bottles, I've spent $150, $151 actually, of my $1,000 budget. Now let's move on to hair care. The first item that I knew I wanted to pick up was a Way hair mask. This is the treatment mask for fine and medium hair. It is $38, which is too much. I don't think that I could bring myself to spend $38 on a hair mask, but... You know, if I had a thousand dollars for a gift card that I needed to spend today, I would be willing to do that. I feel like this might be just perfect because I do have pretty fine hair and it's not behaving itself today like it ever does. Why do I even mention it? But I feel like some hair masks can really weigh my hair down rather than just giving me that, that soft, nourished hair that I'm looking for. And I feel like the fact that this is targeted at fine and medium hair and its way, which I have enjoyed the way leave-in conditioner that I've had, I feel like I would probably like this. A hair product that I was very interested in is from Olaplex. This is the number three hair perfecter. It is the bond restoring treatments. My understanding is that you put this on pre-shampoo and somehow it like mends split ends. I have no idea what witchcraft is behind that, but it sounds very interesting. And if I had that thousand dollars to spend at Sephora, there's definitely something I would be very interested in trying. I think I also decided that I would make a couple of more sensible purchases. So I would have picked up two Briogeo uh, travel sets, the Farewell Frizz Smooth and Shine Hair Care Travel Kit for Frizz Control and Heat Protection, which is too much name for little, little travel sizes. Uh, these are both 
four item sets. And then the other one would be the Don't Despair Repair Strengthen and Repair Travel Kit. I used up all of my travel stuff a few months ago. I kind of accepted that I was not going to be traveling for the foreseeable future and it was time to use up any minis that I had set aside for travel before they just went bad on me. So I eventually will need to replace some of those and I thought that it would be fun to try minis of all these Briochio products. And for those not keeping track at home, that would be $116 on four items for my hair. I remember this last year too, just thinking that that $1,000 was stretched a lot further than it actually does and just being so disappointed when I realized just how little you could actually get for $1,000. Next we'll move on to skincare, so the last of the boring categories. The first item that I would get is something that I've had a sample of in the past. This is the First Aid Beauty Fab Pharma Arnica Relief and Rescue Mask. This is like a green... They say it's a mask. I ended up using it largely as like a nighttime moisturizer. I would use it every second or every third night during the winter. I don't think this product is an absolute necessity for me. I don't think any of these items are absolute necessities for me, but I do think that it did a really good job of keeping my skin hydrated and it was a product I enjoyed using. So for $32 out of my 1000 I would definitely give that a go. Another item that I'm actually currently working on, I've only been using this for about a week, so take everything I'm saying right now with a grain of salt, but I've been really enjoying so far is the Clinique Moisture Surge 100 Hour Auto Replenishing Hydrator Moisturizer because apparently it's both a hydrator and a moisturizer, in case you were wondering. Anyway, I don't know why this is a 100 hour auto replenisher. I can't imagine wanting to keep any product on my face for four days at a time. I feel like I would really want to wash it about three to four times in there at least. But anyway, this is really nice and cooling on the skin. I do feel that my skin feels plump in a really nice, healthy way in the morning after I've used this in the evening. It's pink, which uh, maybe shouldn't be a selling point, but absolutely makes it more fun. And um, it's just a really nice, cooling gel. I much prefer gel moisturizer over a more uh, creamy or lotiony moisturizer and this is very much up my alley. It's also very expensive. I got the medium size I believe. So this would have been $79 for a little over four ounces. It's a 125 milliliter jar. I'm counting this next product as skincare because that's how I tend to think of it, but this could also be our segue into the makeup section. This is from Benefit Cosmetics and is the Pore Fashional Hydrating Primer. I have used up two samples of this and loved it. I feel like it is a just really lovely feeling product to use. It is part of their Pore Fashional line, so it does have a little bit of pore filling, smoothing qualities to it but it just feels so calming on the skin. During the winter, I think that this would be really nice to layer over a moisturizer and then apply makeup on top. So get the benefits of the moisture as well as the smoothing and improved makeup adherence that you get from a primer. This is a pretty expensive product though. It's actually a little bit smaller than most primers. You only get three quarters of an ounce, so 22 milliliters, and it's $32. I'm not in any great rush to go out and buy this, though I do think it would be really nice to have on hand for winter. So now that I've blown $143 on skincare and we're just a little bit shy of having spent half of the budget already, Let's move in to the part that I'm actually most interested in, which is the makeup. I am not big into foundation or concealer. If you've been around my channel before, you likely know that. So the only 
um, complexion product that I would have picked up is from Fenty. And this is the Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint. This is, I feel like this product had a real moment when it first came out, which was, I don't even know. Within the past year or so, time has been doing funny things through 2020 and 2021. In any case, I'm still very interested in it. I've heard generally good things. I have pretty normal skin, so I think I could probably make it work. I also don't generally wear foundation, so I don't expect a huge amount of coverage out of a product. And as far as Sephora prices go, this is actually relatively reasonable at $29.50 for just a hair over an ounce. I really thought when I sat down to put my cart together that the largest category would be eyeshadow, but by the time that I was done adding everything, I had a lot more face products. Uh, I guess cheek products would be a better descriptor, so highlight, bronzer, and blush in my cart, and then I had eyeshadow. I think I have three eyeshadow palettes in this video. Anyway, we're going to talk about face first. And the first item that I just made a beeline for was from Dior. This is the Backstage Glow Face Palette. I was looking at the color Glitz, which is a little bit warmer than the original. And it also, at least to me, looks to be a little bit softer. I have a yellow highlight quite similar to that upper left shade that I adore that white and almost peach highlighter, both look beautiful. I don't know how effectively I would be able to use that brown highlight, though I suspect that it might make a really pretty blush or a very, very glowy bronzer on me. In any case, I feel like this would be so much fun to use. And I feel silly saying this, but after looking at the prices on everything else in this video, this seems almost moderately priced at $45 for four pans of face product from Dior. Maybe my idea of reasonable prices has been very skewed through the process of making this video. Next up, and I think this would likely be the first thing to get called if I was told when I got up to the register that I was actually over a thousand dollars. I'm not, by the way, but with tax I would be. This is from Jouer, and this is their Blush Bouquet Dual Blush Palette, and I would get mine in the Rose Gold collection. This has a little bit more of a bronzy blush and then a more standard light pink. Um, it's definitely aimed at fairer skin tones, which I have. And I've always been intrigued by these Jouer duos. There's something that's just so aesthetically pleasing about the little duos and the beautiful compacts. I've heard really good things about the quality of these. I've just never tried them because they're $32 and goodness knows I have plenty of blush without adding two more. And then finally, we have a trio from Pat McGrath. This is the Sublime Skin Highlighting Trio. I have heard, and I do not know if this is true, that these are the same formula as their special shade eyeshadows. And I think that especially the two on the left would be gorgeous as either face highlighters or as eyeshadows. I can see myself getting a lot of use out of that pinky purple as well as that white that seems to shift blue, yellow, and maybe green all at the same time. That looks gorgeous. I feel like that would be so much fun to play with on the cheeks as well as the eyes. Now that shade on the far right, the quite deep golden bronze, obviously would not be a highlighter on me. But if this is indeed that same formula as the special shades, I feel like it would make an absolutely stunning eyeshadow. I can definitely get behind the idea of a really, really well-performing, beautiful, interesting bronze eyeshadow. Sounds great. And this would come to $50. Oof. In addition to those three face palettes, I also have quite a few singles. I only would have picked up one blush though, 
and this is from Rare Beauty. I've not tried anything from Rare Beauty, and I would like to. In particular, the item that most interests me is the liquid blush, and the shade that I was most interested in is called Grace. This is an interesting shade. It is quite pink, but it verges on purple. Now, I love a good purple leaning blush. I use a lilac eyeshadow probably about once a week as my blush and I really enjoy the effect and I think that I would really have fun time playing with this color. It's a little bit more vibrant than most of the blushes I wear and just something a little different for me. I think I decided against adding any bronzers to my cart. Um, bronzer isn't something that I'm super interested in. I have a few minis and I feel like that really covers me pretty well. Um, it's not something I'm super interested in branching out and trying a bunch of different formulas in. But I do like highlights. So I have three highlights in my cart um, in addition to the ones that were in the various face palettes. We're going to start with Benefit High Beam. This is a classic. It's been around for several years, I believe, and it is a really soft pink liquid highlighter. Now, I have fallen in love with a Wet n Wild uh, liquid highlighter. I'm actually wearing it today. This is one of their Hello Halo liquid illuminators, I think is what they, the term they use. The one that I have is a white base that shifts pinky purple, but more purple. This I think would be a little bit more subtle and maybe a little bit easier to wear in an understated way because it is a really pretty soft satin pink. I think this would be super beautiful. I This would be $18. I also wanted to pick up another Luminizer. This one would be from Marc Jacobs in the color Moonlit, and this is one of the uh, Glow Away Dewy Coconut Face Luminizers, which is a long way to say it's a liquid highlight. Based on what I see in the image, which I think that with highlighters in particular, it's kind of hard to judge what you're going to get based on what you see in the picture, but what I hope that I would be receiving is almost a gray pink, a uh, silvery pink. I feel like that would be such a beautiful color and it's something that I could see myself wearing on my cheekbones and then all over my lid just as a really simple, easy, but very glowy, almost one and done look. I feel like that could be super, super beautiful. And uh, it's on sale for 50% off. It's $16 because they're trying to clear out pretty much all the Marc Jacobs Beauty stuff. And then finally, as far as highlights go, we're going back to Dior. And I didn't notice this as I was adding things to cart, but this costs more than that entire quad did. This is the Dior Skin Nude Luminizer Shimmering Glow Powder Highlighter. Again, with these names. The shade that I'm most interested in is probably the most unusual one that they have in their line and it is a silver. I just think this could be really fun. I have no idea what a silver highlight would end up looking like on me and certainly I wouldn't spend $48 of actual money to find out but $48 of pretend money? Very interested. This is I think the first item that I would take out of that box and swatch because I have no idea what this would look like. And I am intrigued. Let's do eye products, then lip products. I didn't choose any, you know, eye primer, mascara, liquid liner, anything like that. I just stuck to eyeshadow. I am perfectly happy with my drugstore options for those other categories. Eyeshadow is definitely where I'd be more interested in playing around. And the first palette that I would have picked out was from Pat McGrath. This is the Blitz Astral Quad, 
palette in Ritualistic Rose. It is sort of a lighter, it's a bit of a lighter palette in her line. It's got a really light pastel yellow, a pink, a lighter purple, and then a brownish shade. I feel like this could give me a really pretty easy everyday look. And I feel like I could really amp things up with those special sh shades using maybe even the yellow and the purple together to get something that was a little bit bolder. It's It looks really pretty. I'm very curious in Pat McGrath eyeshadows, but even in this fantasy situation, I'm not quite curious enough to spend $129, $128. Something in that ballpark for one of the bigger palettes. When YouTubers talk about Pat McGrath, I feel like it's almost standard in the next breath to mention Natasha Denona, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I am most interested in the glam palette of her really smaller palettes. I also like the look of Metropolis, but that's just larger palette. It has more shades and it's about double the cost. This is a little bit more reasonable, if you can call it that, at $65. Achieve a really nice variety of cool toned neutral looks with this. I definitely prefer my cool tone neutrals over my warm tone neutrals. This just looks to me like a pretty darn near perfect neutral palette. And while I don't think that I will ever end up purchasing this. I think that it's always going to be something that is just hanging out on the periphery of my wish list. Then the final palette that I would have picked up is from Viseyar. This is one of their $44 palettes. It's um, one of the 12 pans, but in the smaller packaging. This is the Paris Love Letter Etendu eyeshadow palette. This is the one that really reminds me, and I think a lot of other people as well, of the Tiny Marvels palette, I believe it is, from Sydney Grace, the one they did with Mel Thompson. It's this really interesting mixture of mostly neutrals. You could get the prettiest neutral glam look out of this, but it also has a few more interesting pops of color. You have a coral, a quite bright peach, and then this really pretty springtime grass green. Just lovely. We have purple. I love purple eyeshadow. It's definitely a color that I need to think to reach for more often, but love that. And this gray that almost looks to have a little bit of bluish purple in it. I think that would also be a lot of fun to use. I do have a Viseyar palette. I have the Petite Pro 2. I actually have the Petite Pro 3 on the way to me, and I'm really impressed with the quality. I really enjoy using it, and this color scheme is definitely the one that appeals the most to me of their, at least their smaller palettes, their less expensive versions. I'm realizing that I haven't been saying totals for the makeup categories we've been going along, and I don't really want to go back and figure those out because I know this is just a fantasy. I'm not spending any real money. I actually haven't placed a Sephora order in two or three months, I believe. But still, uh, I'm not even sure that I want to know how much my fantasy self is willing to spend on colored dust to put on her cheeks and her eyes. You understand? comes to makeup, lipstick is definitely my first love, so it doesn't surprise me a whole lot that this is a pretty large category and also a pretty expensive category in my makeup cart. Uh, I would have picked up five lipsticks, all of which are quite high-end. I can't actually remember the brand of the fifth one, but they're all expensive. Let's, let's just get that out there. So I would have chosen two NARS lipsticks. These are both just in their standard 
lipstick formula, not the Audacious formula. Um, the first one I would have picked out is Orgasm. I've actually had a mini of Orgasm in the past, like a deluxe sample or something. I got it in some kind of Sephora kit and I loved it. I used it up so fast. I've really enjoyed Orgasm in all of the different products that I've tried it, it in. I mean, they have it in so many different formats now. I've tried it in their After Glow Balm, uh, the blush, and this lipstick. Loved all three of them. Um, I would definitely purchase a full size. Another color that's always been really interesting to me is Skip. This is a really bold pink. Well, a Schiaparelli pink, which is, I'm guessing where it gets its name from. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think that that is a coincidence. It's really beautiful, super vibrant, hot pink it is beautiful. And I really did enjoy the formula of the orgasm lipstick as well as just the effect it gave. So I think that I would really like these. Okay, I forgot what the other brand was. It turns out that it was also from NARS and just orgasm in another form. This is the Afterglow Lip Balm. I had a sample of this in the winter sometime. It was beautiful. I went through it way too fast because it was just a little blister pack, but I loved it. It was so, so pretty. It was really soft. It looked super healthy. It gave just the right amount of color to my lips. So pretty. Not sure that I'd be willing to spend $28 on it. 15? Absolutely. But um, 28 is a little bit much. However, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous product. And if you are in the market for a $28 tinted lip balm, essentially, I would strongly recommend checking these out. They're gorgeous. Two more lipsticks and then we are done. The first is from Pat McGrath. Apparently I was feeling very interested in Pat McGrath when I was filling my cart and yeah, I, I am very interested in trying some more Pat McGrath things. I've actually tried some of these matte trance lipsticks in mini form and I really do like them. They're a very thin, very comfortable, but yet very matte formula. They're really nice and the color that I was most interested in is Polaroid Pink. I feel like this would be a really wearable color for me for every day. It looks to be a cool toned pink with a little bit of sort of a melon shade to it. It looks beautiful. It's a shade that I think I could wear on an everyday basis, which is definitely something that I would be looking for if I was going to spend $38 on a lipstick. Those Pat McGrath lipsticks, by the way, are $38. They make NARS lipsticks look reasonably priced. Wow. Um, the final item in this entire haul is from Dior. I have one of these as well. I received it through Influencer. Actually, I have two of these. Um, I have a nude shade and a red. I love both of them, especially that red is stunning. Probably my favorite lipstick that I own quite possibly my favorite lipstick that I have ever owned. And I decided that in my fantasy haul, I would pick up another one. These are $38, but the component is refillable. And I believe that the refills are like 33 or $34. So you do get a reasonable price decrease. Not enough, but it makes it a little bit easier to stomach the price tag. The shade that I was most interested in is Sensual Matte. It is a light, slightly cool toned nude. I feel like it would be a really flattering everyday shade for me. Again, just like the Pat McGrath, if I'm gonna spend insane amounts of money on a lipstick, it had better be something that I would be happy to use every day. If I'm not panning that lipstick, eventually just through constant use, um, we have a problem. 
and in this video my grand total would have come to $993. That is an insane amount of money to think about spending at Sephora. I have not spent anywhere close to that amount at Sephora total, <laughs> not never mind just in one go, but this was really fun to do. I'm actually kind of interested to go back to last year's video and see if there's any overlap in the products that I would have chosen. I suspect that there is a little bit, maybe with the skincare products. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if I um, had black opium in there as well. I'll have to do that. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, congratulations on getting to the end. I don't know how long this will end up being, but I've been filming for like 53 minutes. So I assume it'll be a bit of a longer one. Thank you so much for putting up with my rambling. I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed, and I really hope that I'll see you next time. Bye!